OI connector you know, is a set of Java services that integrate the product CA Performance Center and its enabled products with the DOI, DOI platform. There is a requirement of CAPC 3.5 or higher. So this component does require CAPC 3.5. And that's a, um, there's a version check that actually happens when the component starts, the OI connector starts, and it queries CAPC to make sure it has a version suitable uh, for operation, and if that version is below 3.5, it will exit with an error in the log file indicating that it did not find a suitable version of CA Performance Center. So for those of you, I imagine most are familiar with what CA Perform for Performance Center brings, but the reason it was chosen as the integration point is because it provides a consolidated inventory and UI across multiple CA infrastructure monitoring products. Uh, CA you know, performance management with its data aggregator, uh, ADA, NFA. Um, so today, though, those supported products you see listed, the CAPM, ADA, and NFA. So uh, those are the three that three integrated products with CAPC that we handle in this integration today. Okay. Let's look a little closer at the actual OI connector itself. The OI connector actually consists of two Java services. There's the core OI connector service, uh, and then there's a second service called the OI agent service. And we'll just talk briefly a little bit about each of those. Connector service is responsible for sending uh, the inventory and events, as well as CAPM metrics to the platform. So with inventory, it's a single inventory flow for all integrated products. What that means is there's, there's not a separate ADA, NFA, and, and PM inventory. There's a single inventory. And so that inventory is sent to a single uh, elastic, as we'll see, a single elastic index called CA, you know, inventory CAPM. And so it's, it's a consolidated inventory. And the same goes for events. So what we'll do is we'll harvest all events uh, on the set of inventory that's being de delivered, and those events will flow through this OI connector service. And then lastly, metrics. Uh, it harvests CAPM metrics directly out of C CAPM via the Open API uh, interface, uh, which is an OData query interface that is built into the CAPM product. And so the connector is capable of querying the metric data over Open API and sending that metric data directly to Jarvis through the ingestion API. Now there's a separate service, the second service, the OI agent service, which is responsible for sending NFA and ADA metrics. And so these metrics are queried by that OI agent service directly from the corresponding storage databases for each of those products. And there's some communication that happens between these two services. So the OI connector service, it knows uh, what inventory is, is uh, being delivered and it will inform the OI agent service of that inventory so it knows which metrics to harvest. So this way the agent service is not sending metrics on everything that ADA and NFA are monitoring, but rather just uh, metrics related to the inventory that we care about for this integration. There's no database storage involved with the OI connector. So, and this is just where the connector fits again in, the, in this architecture. Um, I think we've kind of already covered covered this, but it might be helpful just to, to see it plugged in everywhere. And so what the OI connector service does is it utilizes two groups in CAPC, the first being an OI, what we call the OI seed group. And this is the starting inventory that will be contributed by the OI connector to the platform. And by default, so these groups don't exist, you know, when you install CA Performance Center, you won't have these groups. But when the connector starts up, if these groups don't exist, it will create them. The OI seed group is initially created with the default of all devices, all applications. And this is a, these are rule-based uh, groups. So in other words, if, if new devices are discovered, they would automatically be included in the seed group because it's a rule-based uh, query. And if a customer needs to wants to tune down the inventory that's sent, this is where you would edit it. You would edit the seed group to decrease um, the amount of inventory that, that you're actually monitor that, that you're monitoring that you want to send to DOI. So instead of say all devices, I could 
pick, you know, just routers or some subset of routers. And of course, using any of the CAPC group functionality to define to define that set of inventory. And over on the right here, you can see the group uh, a screenshot of the group tree in, from CA Performance Center, and <clears throat> and see, you know, I can drill in under all groups. There'll be an OI integration uh, parent group, and within that, two subgroups: one for the C group and one for the inventory group. The inventory group is really a, a read-only group. It's something that should be edited. What it, what it does do, though, is keep track of the current state of inventory that's being delivered to DOI. So the seed group represents the starting inventory. The OI inventory group re represents kind of the, the current state of what's being delivered. And the reason there, there could be a difference has to do with the way the ADA NFA integration works in that you could start with um, a seed group that has something like an ADA application inventory item. And when that gets delivered down through the agent, the, uh, the agent service to NFA, NFA will say, hey, wait a minute, I know about these routers that contribute to that application flow. And so therefore those routers would then be contributed to the inventory. And so the seed group might start with only a single application, but then as NFA contributes back routers as part of that inventory, it would be added to the OI inventory group. So if you're looking to see what's currently being delivered to the platform, you would look at the OI inventory group. That's the current state of all inventory that's being sent. If you're looking to to modify, you know, modify the starting inventory, then you would change that seed group. To, to tune things down. What would be lost if, if the OI connector failed or the con connectivity between the connector and DOI would would be the, the flow, right? So we're not, we would not go back and re-query metrics and send metrics on um, time time that has passed. So we're always, we're always, while the connector is running, it's harvesting the latest data. So with multi-tenancy, we have a separate set of these, these groups per CAPC tenant, and then the inventory could be scoped by tenant. And we have a separate mapping, we'll see this in a bit when we talk about configuration that lets you map a CAPC tenant to a DOI platform tenant ID. And you can map multiple, so if you wanted, you could multi map multiple CAPC tenants to a single DOI platform tenant ID. <clears throat> and so the way that would look in the CAPC group hierarchy is underneath your defined tenants, I have tenant one, and you can see under groups, I would have an OI integration parent group and then the two seed and inventory groups underneath. And then looking down at tenant three, you can see the similar, a similar structure. And so each tenant inventory would be scoped by the tenant specific seed group. So tenant three OI seed group would control um, the starting inventory for what gets sent and delivered for tenant three to the DOI platform. Okay. okay, so you can see I have not, this is not a multi-tenant environment, but you can see that I have the OI integration parent group, and if I look in here, I see the C group, and as I mentioned, this is rules-based, so I've got two rules, which is add all devices and add all applications. So these are the default, the default rules, and so if I were to click on items, I could see that I'm currently delivering 37 devices as part of this inventory. Uh, this is at least, so this is the C group, this is starting with these 37 devices. And if I look at the inventory group, in this case, I don't have ADA NFA in this environment, but um, so my, I would expect my inventory group to exactly match my seed group, and it, and it does, it's the 37 devices. But just to give you an idea where you would find this in the group hierarchy. So we have a seed task, which is running every, by default, five minutes. I, I put the defaults down here. All of this can be configured and, and modified through some XML configuration. There's a C task that runs every five minutes. It starts on startup. It queries the seed group, and if it detects a change, it will reset things. So if you decide that you want to decrease or add additional inventory to the seed group, and you make that change, you don't need to restart the connector. It will get picked up the next time this task fires, which would be the next kind of five minute boundary. And it would detect that the seed group had changed. It would clear the, the OI inventory group and then kind of restart basically, um, kind of flush the inventory cache and start up 
uh, with the new seed group. So the next task is an inventory task, which runs every 10 minutes, and that's sending the latest inventory set to the DOI platform. So if a new device were added or, or came online, it would not get picked up until the next 10 minute interval. And we, we send over that, that latest state of inventory every 10 minutes. And then there's an event task, which fires every one minute. Um, and it looks back five, and what it does is it's basically sending all events um, for items that are in the inventory group to the platform. So it's saying, okay, look back five minutes ago, and this is so that we allow we allow any kind of late breaking events to come in here. But we're basically saying, give me the latest or the one minute worth of events five minutes ago in, on the inventory that we're contributing, and we send those that event data over to the DOI platform. And then the last task is the, the data source task, which fires every five minutes, and that is is data flow. So we're we're sending <clears throat> the connector is actually sending down to the various data sources, PM, ADA, NFA, and saying, okay, here's the latest inventory that we're monitoring. Go ahead and update yourself to send metrics on that inventory. And in the case of the PM data, that data is going over on, on five minute boundaries, but if you're collecting that data, harvesting it, say at a one minute poll interval, you'll get, you know, five, you'll get five data points per, per each flow to, um, the DOI platform. So, but we're firing the task every five minutes, but that doesn't mean that we can't still send one minute pull data. Um, the, you, you just would get it at the, the five minute when the task fires. Hope I've explained that okay. One note about uh, reinstalling or upgrading. Today, the installer doesn't preserve config changes. So if you go back and reinstall or need to upgrade, you can make a backup of the configuration folder which is where the, the config for the tenants and the config is stored. Um, you know, do your installation and then just and copy back the config to get back to the where obviously uh, a future enhancement here to, uh, or not enhancement, but a future work here to, to do a better job with the upgrade scenario. So I mentioned earlier how, how the installer will only install one, set up one tenant out of the box. That can be edited after the install by modifying the tenants.properties file in the configuration folder. So some, some tuning in there, um, there's the syntax is the, le the left side is the name of the tenant within CAPC. The right side is the DOI tenant ID. And the underscore default underscore tenant name is, is a kind of a, a built-in uh, identifier or reserved kind of a reserved tenant name, which basically says all all tenant inf all information basically. So it's non-tenanted. Um, it would include um, everything. So if you're not concerned with multi-tenancy, then using underscore default underscore would be the way to go. If you want to restrict um, data by tenant, then use specific tenant IDs. And then after modifying the tenant property file, you would need to restart the connector for the changes to to go into effect. So they, it won't automatically, today anyway, it won't automatically get picked up. You have to restart the connector. We mentioned modifying the inventory scope. Uh, you can edit the seed group to tune down or edit what uh, inventory is sent to the platform. And, uh, you know, CAPC, there's, there's, you can use rules to, to formulate groups, but you can also just cherry pick items or, or use the group hierarchy to navigate and cherry pick items. And so any way that you can create a group in CAPC, you can edit that seed group and, uh, and, and constrict or, or add additional inventory to the, to the group. Um, restarting the connector services is not required when you modify the seed group. Those changes, when that seed group task fires uh, by default every five minutes, it would detect that the seed group had changed and those changes would be incorporated and processed and uh, the inventory sent in the next push would reflect the modified, the modified seed. We can also control the CAPM metric families uh, that, are, that are delivered. Um, this is specific to just the CAPM part of this integration. So out of the box today, we send all metrics in the availability and reachability metric families. And those are device level metrics. Um, you can see in my slide here the the part in red. You can see the two 
uh, metric families name their availability and reachability. Um, this section can be modified. You can add additional metric family names um, if you want to specify additional and, and including, you know, a port or interface level metric family um, as well. Um, <clears throat> the way that you, the naming convention is the same as what you would find in OpenAPI via Query Builder. When you look in, in the, the Query Builder there, you can see on my screenshot, I'm drilling into metric family and you can see all the various metric family names. And they all have a MF postfix on them. If you drop, drop the MF, that would be the name that you would use here. Now you can actually send all metric families if you were to completely just comment out this constructor uh, argument and not, not pass anything here that would say send all metric families. And at, at lower scale, that, that's fine. Um, but at, at higher scale, as I mentioned, the Jarvis, Jar, both Jarvis ingestion and leaving room for other product data in the Jarvis platform um, dictated that at least in this initial uh, release out of the box, we would restrict to availability and reachability with the option to up, upscale it to other metric families if desired. I mentioned that all the various tasks run on with kind of default timing, the seed task, the inventory task, all of that can be configured as well. I wouldn't expect you to have to modify those, but if you did, um, that's all configured through the config XML as well. And I've listed the, the various sections in here where you could find those. You would need to restart this service though after making those changes. Those are things that are read on startup. And so if you modify these, you would want to restart. And these are the uh, similar entries for the event task and the data source task. If you needed to change where, you know, any of the config around where CAPC is installed, there's a section in the config XML for that as well. And there's similar setup for the Jarvis host and port and Elastic host and port. Some other information here on things you can tune that uh, out of the box, I would not expect you to have to tune these, but just to make you aware that these options are there. Things like batch sizes, so when we send <clears throat> when we send inventory information or metric information to Jarvis via its ingestion API, we send that information in, in, in batch documents. So we're not sending just a single inventory item per REST call. We're sending batches of 100 inventory items per call, and those can be scaled up or down. And again, then restarting the service after is important. <clears throat> There's a similar bulk, bulk size uh, on the agent side on the agent side for ADA and NFA metric data as well. <clears throat> I mentioned that the OI connector, the core service, talks to the OI agent service over a specific port. That port is 8267 by default, but it could be modified through the config, again, also requiring a restart. All right, so we'll start with prerequisite items which we have to um, check uh, or get before we start OI connector installation. So here we are integrating DX NetOps with DX OI. So to before installing uh, OI connector, we have to make sure our uh, DX NetOps environment is up and running. All its components are green state. Those are up and running. We also have to make sure our uh, DX OI environment is also uh, in good condition. We have to make sure that uh, the system clock is synchronized between all the CAPC uh, component uh, where these are installed. And then we have to decide the, the VM where we want to install uh, OI connector. You can also install this OI connector on PC machine, but it is recommended that you choose a separate machine to install it. And then finally, you have to download OI connector uh, on the selected virtual machine so that we can start the installation. All right. So for example, now see if you have a DX OI environment, which is on SAS. In that case, uh, to have a successful integration between uh, DX NetOps and OI, you have to have a SSL certificate imported and installed on the virtual machine where you are installing OI connector. So here we, I have specified the commands using which you can uh, download SSL certificate, and here are the command using which you can install it. So once you have installed, uh, these certificates, you are good to go for the OI connector installation. 
So he, now we are going to see what are the steps which you have to follow for OI connector installation. So we have to log in on to the machine which we have decide, decided to install OI connector and then uh, open a terminal or a command prompt. And then we have to run uh, this uh, installer file using this command. So once we start this installation, it will provide us uh, uh, end user license agreement. So we have to go through it and at the end we have to press, we have to press Y. Uh, now after that, it will give us the choices of uh, Java build to be used. Uh, so here are three options. Um, so the, the first one is the default one, which comes with the OI connector itself. But if you wish to choose a different OI connector, you can choose so. Uh, in that case, you have to specify the location uh, from where you want to use that Java build. And then we have to, we have to specify the uh, installation directory for OI connector. The default is slash opt slash ca, but you can choose a different one as well. Now, now the next section we have to specify about uh, details of Spectrum Data Publisher, which we want to integrate with OI. So here are the fields which we have to, um, which we have to specify: the protocol, CAPC host name, port number, tenant, username, and password. So this port protocol is the protocol against which your uh, CAPC is running. The default is HTTP, but if your uh, CAPC is running on HTTPS, you have to specify that. Uh, in the host name, you have to specify CAPC host name. The port number you have to specify. Uh, the default is 8181. This tenant is your CAPC tenant. The default is underscore default underscore. So if you wish to use the same uh, CAPC tenant, you can press enter. Here we have to specify username. This username is the username which you specify while logging into CAPC portal. And this is the password for the same. In the next section, we'll specify uh, data about APM service gateway. So in the similar way, we here we have to specify host name, protocol, port, and security token for APM service gateway. So this host name is your APM service gateway host name. This protocol is a protocol against which your APM service gateway service is running. The default is HTTP, but if it is a SaaS environment, in that case, it will be HTTPS. Here you have to specify port. Uh, Default, it will be 80, but if it is uh, your protocol is HTTPS, in that case, you have to you have to use 443. Now, this is security token. This security token is your APM agent, which you can generate from APM page uh, for the specific tenant against which you want to integrate CAPC. Okay, so next section is about Jarvis. So Jarvis, here also we have a similar question we are asked about uh, in the same way we have been asked for uh, APM service gateway. So protocol, host name, port, and tenant. So same things we have to specify here. This tenant is tenant ID, uh, which you can get from uh, DXI underscore tenant uh, index from the elastic. You specify all these values, and then these are two ports which we have to specify. So until unless you are using a separate, you, you are not using a custom port, you can press enter so that the default values are used. Now this section is this section talks about proxy. Um, in in normal circumstances, we don't configure proxy. Uh, if you don't wish to in, uh, configure proxy, you can just press uh, option one to uh, skip this one. But if you wish to configure it, you have to specify uh, protocol host port proxy username proxy password and the non proxy host. So once you specify this and press enter, uh, it you will be presented with pre-install summary where you can go back and check what values you, which you have specified. And you can check uh, if all the values which you have specified are correct. If you find that so, you can press enter so that installation can start. 